Okay guys, quick update on the 8s for 8 Mustang. It has been at Mark's house and he and Dan and Nick have been doing a bunch of stuff with it. One of them is replacing the brake lines because they are routed all over the place. I'm not sure if they're factory routing or not, but they go around the rad support and around near the turbo and there's a line lock and a proportioning valve and all sorts of stuff that we never really use. It doesn't need a line lock and it doesn't need a prop valve. So he's just making the line simpler and rerunning them. Also, they fabricated the turbo kit and he put on a downpipe and they have the radiator and everything in the final position. A lot of stuff is pretty much done. They hooked up the fuel pressure regulator I got, the China Boy, for like $28. That's all hooked up out of some spare fittings and lines. Uh, I'll show a picture of that. You can see there's like three different color AN fittings on it attached to the fuel lines that already came to the car. They came with the car. So, uh, like I said, there's even stuff I forgot that's on this car already, like a bump steer kit and it's everything. Like, it's funny once you start looking, you're like, oh, I already have this. I already have that. Anyway, the turbo kit is pretty much done. It has a 5-inch aluminum downpipe, which was cheaper than you think. And it has the 65 Mustang rad, and they're laying it sideways. And they cut a little bit of the frame out of the front to fit the turbo. And we were trying to make space. The idea is so that we can get a much bigger turbo in there if we want to later. So that's why it might seem like there's... It might seem like it's in a funny position but it's well under the hood line and there's a ton of space if we want to put like a Pro Mod 94 on there, which Varen sells. It isn't out of the question and it is something we'd like to try at some point. So making sure there's enough room for that. The transmission is in. They did the transmission mount. Uh, just got a, like a 10 or $15, I think it was $8 off Rock Auto, a rubber TH400 transmission mount. The drive shaft we have it's cut down uh, we just have to have one of my friends uh, mike dno dno fab has cut a bunch of my drive shafts down it was already pre-balanced it was already used in a high horsepower car but he went with a carbon fiber one i bought it from the guy and we we're going to cut it down and put it in this car so because it was much cheaper than getting one built uh, people cut down junkyard ones all the time they just spin them or make sure they're true or roll the dice then the other thing we did is we got gears from the junkyard for like $28 or something like that. The car came with like 390s in it. He counted them and did the math. It has like 390 gears or 410s or something like that. So a little too aggressive for how much power this thing is going to make. So we decided this, this car will probably be really good with like a 373 or a 355 and a 28 inch tire. But we're going to go right to a 327 figuring we're going to add power almost immediately anyway so we didn't want to do gear change multiple times so not perfect gearing but gearing good enough for future proofing as as most of this project is completely future proofing so there's a whole bunch of pictures from them fabbing everything and i'll also i think mark filmed like a bunch of short videos and a little bit longer one and he sent it to me but email killed the quality so I'll see how it looks, see if I can combine that one into this, or if this will just be like a talk over slideshow. Not sure yet. If, if Mark's video, if it looks poor on a large screen, I will probably end up uh, scrapping it and waiting to get the full quality file off his phone somehow when I meet up with him or whatever else. So there really is not much to do. The oil feed and drain is done a lot is done uh man I'm, I'm struggling to figure out what's left uh figuring out just got to do the fuel pumps we already have the cell it already has all the fittings uh we we literally have just fittings in the car it came with the cell it already has the lines so it's just a matter of connecting everything Here, guys got the uh five inch down pipe exhausting um got these jugs whatever they are wheels matt got off the internet uh, there's the big boy sitting in there. Got about a, about a three and a half, four inch drop coming out. So we shouldn't need any kind of scavenge pump to the uh, oil drain. It's 
got to finish up the inner core piping. Right there's the inner core. At the bottom, nice shot. Come back on the top, boom, right through that hole. Right in, we get this little radiator. It's going to go over there on the side. And get it ready. There's some plumbing things and uh, swap the gears and be ready to rock. Uh, it has bulkheads in the top of the tank and the sides and returns and feeds. So we'll figure out something to hook up the twin pumps to and then wire them and hook it up. And it's really very close to starting just a bunch of odds and ends. The entire intercooler cold side piping is already done. The, the list is very short, <laughs> like I said, but the rest of it's small stuff. I did get wheels. I bought uh, used Jags wheels with used front tires on them, 28 inches tall. I got those off of, I asked a bunch of friends if they had anything laying around, and I looked on Facebook Marketplace locally, and I found those. And then I also found Jags like weld knockoffs for the back with the conical seat. I hate shanks, so this is great. Both of those are conical seat instead of the stupid shank. And the rear... We kicked around a lot of stuff because we were having trouble finding... A bunch of my friends had said uh, 10, a 15 by 10 with a 6.5 backspacing is absolutely perfect for an SN95. You can put a 28, you know, 275 straight into the back of the car. Huge tire, no problem. It just has to be 6.5 backspace. And, uh, man, I, I struggled to find exactly that. Or they were, you know, they were welds with the shank and everything else. Or people wanted too much. Uh, we kicked around a lot of stuff. Eventually, I found the rims very cheap, and we found takeoff tires for like 50 bucks. They're like a Gen 1. They're not not great. It's not perfect. It's not like a Mickey Pro, but it, it obviously all this stuff lowers the, the, the cost, the initial cost, guys. So that's obviously the big thing. So I hope you enjoy this slideshow. We'll go over all the pictures and everything else, and... Hopefully we'll tag on a bunch of Mark's videos in here and we'll do another update. I thought I would get, you know, a little bit, like it sucks that the, the video quality got killed on the video Mark sent. So hopefully, maybe I'll just upload that and we can all just deal with the 360p party. We'll see how it is, right? So that is your update on 8s for 8 it is getting close to starting and it won't be long now. I ordered a flex fuel sensor for it off of Pace Performance. So we're going to put that in the return line as usual and wire that into the Terminator ECU and everything's going to be flying from there.